So looking at page 10, I'm going to help you remember how to do this, okay? Um, and we said last class that how many fractions you need depends on what they give you. So if they give you moles and moles, it's two fractions. If it's grams and moles, it's going to be three fractions. So looking at page 10, number one, um, if we're looking for those key words, moles or grams, what do you see in uh, number one right here? I see grams, yep. And also moles. So how many fractions is that going to be if it's grams and moles? Three. Three fractions. So the first thing you do once you decide, okay, there's three fractions, draw your three fractions. Go ahead, draw your three fractions. Okay? And on top of the first fraction, what do you always put? The number. The number they gave us. Now remember, we are no longer allowed to write just a number. We also need to write what next to it? Moles, M-O-L, and there's something else. We can't even write just a number and a unit. We, we need a third thing now. O2. The O2. When they say eight moles of oxygen gas, if you look at this reaction, the one that is only oxygen is this O2 right here. So that's the chemical. We always need a chemical now also. So every part of every fraction should have a number, a unit, and a chemical. And then the first fraction, the bottom, is always just a 1. Just like normal, just like before, that's not changing. Now this number that they gave us, this 8 moles, is for oxygen. So we know we're going to start at oxygen. You can put a really big dot above oxygen to remind yourself that's where I'm starting. If you read the problem, where are we supposed to end? What chemical are we supposed to end with? Water. It says grams of water. So let's draw a little bridge pointing to water. And that bridge is going to help us know what to write when. Because remember, these coefficients, these numbers in front, tell us a number of moles for each chemical. They tell us 5 moles of O2 and 4 moles of water. So when I come look at this and I say moles of O2 on top, what goes up must come down. I must need moles of O2 on the bottom. When I have moles on the bottom, that's when I'm ready to use this bridge. And remember we talked about, we call this bridge the mole bridge. It's a toll bridge. And if you're going to get on the bridge and drive across the bridge to the other side, the only, that's, this is a car. Sorry, I know it doesn't, or maybe it's a big truck. There you go. I drew a truck. Okay. If you're going to drive across the bridge to the other side, you have to pay the toll. And how many moles of O2 is the toll to get on the bridge? Five. Five. So I pay five moles of O2 to get on the bridge, so that's why I put a five in this fraction. I'm using the number from the coefficient. Then when I cross the bridge, drive, 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 to get off the bridge, the bridge is telling me what toll I have to pay to get off. What is it the bridge pointing at? What do I have to pay to get off the bridge? For what? What H2O? Moles of H2O. Make sure you write all of those. Remember, all your fraction parts need a number, a unit, and a chemical. Okay, what goes up must come down. So if there's moles of H2 on top, I'm going to put moles of H2 on the bottom. H2O, excuse me, as well. Yes? Why would you put H2O instead of O2? Uh, here or here? No, up there. Here? So in our old unit, we kept the same chemical the whole time. But the point of stoichiometry is we're changing chemicals. So last class I mentioned, now we always use moles four times. Two of those times should be with your first chemical, and the next two times should be with your other chemical. So we've used it twice with oxygen and now twice with water. Does that answer what you're asking? Yes. Okay. So speaking of, if I've used it twice with oxygen and then switched chemicals and used it twice with water, now I have used all the moles I can use. I can't use moles anymore, so I have to switch units. Instead of green moles, what am I going to be using? Grams. grams, golden grams. Okay, and this little detail you may or may not remember from last class. When grams and moles are in the same fraction, 
they need to be the same chemical. So if I have grams and moles together and the moles were water, the grams also need to be the same chemical. So what chemical am I going to write next to grams? H2O. Also water, H2O. Okay, basically when you're looking at your words, uh, only one set of words can be different. So if they're both moles, then the chemicals need to be different. If they're different units, then the chemicals need to be the same. Only one thing can be different. Uh, and then, grams and moles in the same fraction, one trick to it is they need to be the same chemical. The other trick to it is that this now is like our old fractions from our last unit. Before, before we knew how to use the bridge, if you had a number of moles, what number would you have put in there before? Just a one. And if it's grams and moles in the same fraction, that rule is still the same. <coughs> when it's grams and moles in the same fraction, we're going to keep using just one mole. Where do your grams come from? The periodic table. So for water, you're going to have to add up H2 and O. You're going to have to add those up. I'm going to give you a moment. Check your periodic table. Add up H2O. Mm -hmm. I don't have a ton of room, so I'm not going to show all the work for it, but I'm going to get pretty close. You might write smaller than me. Where do you get one mole of each two? You mean putting this one right here? Yeah. Anytime you have grams and moles in the same fraction, your number of moles is going to be one. That's the rule. Grams and moles in the same fraction, use one mole. When you add up water, you should get 18.016 grams. What's the number? And then you should know how to type this in your calculator. I'm going to give you a